Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a decal in Octane or Octane for Moto. Although really any program that uses Octane, it's the same nodes. They're just a little bit different interface. Um, and so it's a little more convoluted than doing it in Moto. The shader tree is awesome at layering stuff, obviously, but it's not that difficult. And I'll show a couple of uh, ways to do it and plus some workarounds if you have, you know, some goofy UVs or stuff like that. So I've got this sci-fi acid here I got from Art Station. I think it's just, just like a space station, I guess, wall section. So we'll do one decal on this red locker thing here, and we'll do another one maybe on this white one here. And yeah, so I've got a couple images loaded up already. And so let's use just this, maybe this biohazard one. Again, these are things I got off of, I think, Art Station, just decal packs. Um, this is a ping with a built-in alpha channel right so that's the easiest thing to use for this for doing decals and then i'll put this one maybe on the white section again just a ping with the built-in alpha channel so let's take a look at let's open up the schematic here i'll just do it in the side window and uh using my picker i'll just select this guy to make sure i've got the right um network loaded so this uh locker right here in fact why don't i just um zoom in a little bit here before I start getting into it, just to frame it up a little bit more nicely. And that'll do. And then uh, jump back here to my schematic. So it's got a roughness, an image going to roughness, and it's got a uh, sort of orangish red color going into the diffuse slot of this glossy material. So I'm gonna start by unhooking that. You'll see it go white. I'm just gonna move it up here. I'm gonna use this again in a second. And I'm going to add a new texture to the scene. The first one I want is just a mix texture. Sometimes it'll come up if you hit the, like the texture uh, pop up like I did, and it's sort of grayed out. Is because the schematic's not selected as the active viewport, so I just tapped on the schematic to let it know that I am indeed in the schematic. And I want to get a mix uh, node in there. Let's grab a RGB image, and that'll be for our. Uh, our decal uh, ping file, right? And I'm also gonna grab this one right here. This is called an alpha image node. And what that'll do is it'll just abstract or extract the alpha channel from that ping. And it'll we'll be able to use that to mix it all together. So, so here's our mix texture and here's our red. I don't need this anymore. Here's our red color. That'll go into the first texture in the mix texture. And I'm gonna drag in my, whoops, my, uh, little ping file here and make sure the file name channel is there. If it's not, just go over the, the channel list and you'll see down here at the bottom file name. You can just drag that in to make sure it's there. And I'm going to click that and drag it over and connect it to the file name of my color RGB image one. That's going to go into the second texture. I'm also going to click and drag it up here to the file name of the alpha node. And that's going to pull the alpha channel out of that ping image. And it's going to use it to mix these two together. And then lastly, I'll just Connect this back to the diffuse slot, and there we go. So, looks sort of right. We've got the, you know, uh, ping image layered on top of the red, which is what we wanted. But obviously, our UV map is leaving something to be desired. So, if I take a look at this image here, uh, or UV map, I'm sorry, I'm just going to select these polys and kind of hide everything else just to get a look at it. Um, and then pop open a UV window down here at the bottom. You'll see that, you know, it's just an atlas texture. So there's just things all over the place. And this image is going to be, you know, displayed across all those different panels. But what we want it on is this one right here, right? This panel right here. That's where we want this image relegated. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. I could export this UV layout right here using texture, export UVs to EPS, and then go to Photoshop and load that up. And then use Photoshop to take my alpha image and just move it on top of that little section using this you know, EPS as a, as a template sort of. And then get rid of that layer and then just save, resave out the image. That's kind of a lot of work. Um, another way is if you look at the, I'll just open the schematic down here. And we've got these two uh, transform nodes on the schematic on each of these um uh, nodes here, right? So we've got the alpha image node. It has a, a UV transform node and the same UV transform node is on our RGB image node. And that allows you to do things like change the scale. So if I 
go down to 25 percent it's like tiling it by four right and then i can actually move this stuff around using translations and i could fiddle around with that and try to get it like right there and then i can also take both of these nodes and change the uv tiling instead of wrap around i'll just do clamp value now i'm just clamping it so it doesn't wrap just that one section up there and then again try to fiddle around with it until it gets there also not the best way to do it so the two ways i would recommend are, are these two so I'm going to actually use a moto texture locator because I can see it in the viewport and I can just use, you know, move tool and rotate tool and scale tool to move it around. So what I'll do is over here in um, my item list, I'm just going to add item and I'll say, uh, we'll just add a texture locator right there. And it added it right there to our folder. I'm just going to rename it um, decal woke like that. And I'm going to drag it into the schematic down here. And if you look over here on the channels and just type in octane, you'll see it has an octane projection channel. So drag that into the schematic. So it's showing up here in the schematic. And I'm gonna plug that into my projection instead of this UV projection. So I'm gonna take octane projection and plug it in, whoops, to the projection here. So I can unplug that one and plug in this one. And same up here, I'm going to unplug the UV projection that came with that node, the Octane UV node, and plug it into my Moto Octane projection node like that. And you can see this is set to um, solid, right? So let's set it to planar. And let's put it on X. And you can see where it is now. And this will also respect uh, the repeats. So we'll just do edge and edge like that. And then over here, I can just, uh, whoops, yeah, turn on my viewport properties and let's uh, view the uh, texture locators like that, or texture locators. And then I'm gonna, you can see it right there. And so I'll just move this over, dink, dink, like that. And you can see it up in Octane. It's just sort of happening in real time there. I can scale it and, you know, kind of put it wherever I want to. So that's, that's you know, one way to do it, right? Easy enough, looks good. I like it. So, right? So, easy enough. Um, you're just adding a moto locator into the scene, plugging into the nodes, and then transforming it to wherever you want it. Looks like it's actually... Is that another language? Oh, it's actually just... Uh, <laughs> it's it's inverted. So, let's take our node here and turn size to negative one on Z. I think that'll do it. There we go. Biohazard. I wonder if it actually... Is there a flip? I can't remember if there's like a flip checkbox or not anyway so there you go make sure it's uh readable and not looking like klingon or something so we got that in and let's look at one other way to do it so why don't i um i'm gonna unplug this octane node or octane projection this texture locator we just used and i'm gonna plug these two back in like we had never done that whole thing i just showed you so this is back to where we had started is that into projection yeah okay look good and there it is up in the corner so that's wrong and what we can do is I'm just going to grab this middle section right here. Let's go to the UV map and just double click there and grab that and look at it from the right view. And I'm going to make a new UV map. We'll just call this texture two. And then you can see it's blank. And the only UV values I'm going to put in texture two are these guys. So I'll just go to my UV uh, tab here and do project from view. There we go. Now we have one UV map with everything on it. And this guy's causing us problems because this is this little thing right there. But you know what? This I do this on CAD files a lot. If I have to put a logo on a CAD file and it's got a billion, you know, triangles and, you know, tessellated uh, geometry that you get from like complex CAD files sometimes, I just grab like the polygons I need from where that logo needs to go and then do a projection on it and then put it in a different UV map. And now I can just use that. So if I go back to my schematic, my two UV maps here, I'm just gonna select them both at the same time and look at the uh, uh, properties. You'll see that it's set to UV set one. If I change that to UV set two, there it is. It just puts it right in the middle of this. And so then I could just go to my uh, UV map here. And if I wanna scale that up, then I just scale this down, boom, boom, boom. Actually, let's um, go back, let me undo that. I believe the, uh, uh, I had some transforms. Yeah, I'd already I'd turned that down to 25%, if you remember. So let's turn that back up to 100. Boom. Turn that back to zero. Boom. Now I can I can still fiddle around with a little bit. There's two ways you can do this. You can mess around with these values, 
like that, or you can actually just go over to the UV map itself. And since we have um, uh, tiling set to off or edge, I can just, you know, scale this up to shrink this down and then, you know, maneuver it wherever I want it. Maybe I want it, you know, in the lower, you know, right in the middle or whatever, like along this sort of edge right there. Looks cool. Looks good. Okay. Looks good. So there's a couple of ways to do it there. So the third way to do it or another way to do it is just actually make geometry for your decal put your color on there and then use that alpha to clip away like a, a stencil map essentially in the shader tree you call it a stencil or a clip map you know, or an opacity map and an octane is the opacity channel so let's do that we're going to put on this white guy here so i'm going to hover over my item was press m in for a new mesh item we'll call it a decal and then i'll just use my cube tool here to draw a uh, plane and then i just want to make sure this plane is you know in front of my geometry here i guess i could have used the work plane but this is fine and i'll just scale it down and move it into place so yep right there looks good press m to give it a material tag we'll call that decal again so now that is in the uh, uh, shader tree right here and we'll drag in that uh, other image yeah this little hospital -y health pack image here and this should have created UVs automatically when I uh, drew that plane. So it's got nice zero to one UVs already. And now I just need to find a way to, you know, clip the uh, unwanted areas away. And so I'm going to add an octane override. And that's going to create an octane uh, shader network out of my shader tree set up here. And if I look in the schematic and uh, just select it there, it'll pop in. Whoops, I don't want that. And so there's my image. Let me just sort of, I don't need this anymore, I guess. So there's my image going into the file name, going into diffuse color. So let's again add a new texture and this will be another alpha image texture. So new texture. Man, Moto really needs somehow, I don't know, it's just smaller text or less chonky nodes. <laughs> Moto's nodes are way too chonky. You can't get a lot of them in the schematic at once. Anyway, remember when I used to think 1920 by 1080 was a lot of room now it is definitely not okay where was i alpha alpha image i think you're gonna guess what we're gonna do here we're gonna take that same image uh file and plug the file name into the alpha image and i'm gonna plug this into opacity before i do that let me press play here so you can see it see it there right you know it's got the black around it and i just want to plug in um this to opacity and hope to see the black go away. But it didn't. You see it got turned sort of a lighter shade of gray. So let's push in here and explore this a little bit because to me this seems like a bug. Um, so we push in. You can see we've got this sort of grayish around where that polygon was. And if I look at the schematic, I'll just pop it open in the bottom here. If I unplug it, that gray goes away and we go back to black, right? So nothing's being clipped, but something's sort of being clipped. It's sort of working. Let me just hover here over the chunky node, put in opacity, but not quite right. So, you know, I did figure this out. Again, like I think it's a bug. If I look at the decal item here and go to the octane tab over in the mesh properties. Now, obviously you can, you know, control camera visibility, shadow visibility, dirt visibility. So let's click off all three and take a look at this. So they're all three off. We see this sort of ghostly reflection here. That's just a reflection, right? So this is a double-sided material by, by default and it's just reflecting the backside of that polygon. So that's actually correct. Um, but we, we do, and if I turn on shadows, you'll see that looks right. There's a shadow, it's just under the part that we're keeping and then, and then the clipping of this larger area of the polygon has gone away. So it seems like it's working. So I turn on camera visibility and shadow visibility is working. And the culprit here is dirt visibility. If I turn that back on, uh, I'm getting that ambient occlusion effect around this whole polygon. So I'm gonna click that back off. So I don't know if that's a bug. Um, seems like a bug. If you're using opacity, it shouldn't be calculating these occlusion rays. Um, you know, that's what it looks like. It looks like a sort of an ambient occlusion effect and dirt is an ambient occlusion effect. And if you look at dirt visibility in the Octane manual, it's, it's literally like, enable or disable dirt visibility. And that's like all it says. So uh, there's a dirt node where you can create, you know, con you know, use, you know, an ambient occlusion effect for concavity or convexity or, you know, whatever. 
Um, and I assume that's what that's for, but for whatever reason, it affects this uh, opacity channel. And opacity channel is, is still being seen by those rays. I almost wonder, you know, if there would be a setting in the kernel that could fix that, but I don't know what it would be. Ray Epsilon, maybe. Maybe it's a precision issue. Anyway, so that looks right. You can even see a little bit of a shadow behind it because we have it pulled away from the wall just a little bit. But that's sort of the third way um, of doing decals, using geometry and then plugging, using an alpha image to plug into the opacity channel here. Now in Moto, it's way easier. Shader tree is just way easier. I would just take this, I would right click, and I would change the effect to, um, or the effect over here. Let me just sort of scooch this over. This effect I would change to RGBA in Moto, and I would use RGB for the color and the alpha of the ping for a stencil effect, and it'd be great. Now, the shader tree is super awesome, and I would love to see Octane and working with the entire shader tree. I think that'd be a really powerful combination. There's a lot of people, especially designers who use Photoshop and Illustrator, they want to get into 3D, and they're not crazy about nodes. Honestly, I think Adobe will have a hard time getting substance uh, designer you know, into the hands of some of these people, they're just going to be like, that's not how I work. I work with layers. My brain doesn't work like that. It looks complicated. I don't want to do it. Shader Tree is super accessible to those people. And, you know, if, if it worked with out of the box with, with Octane and all the Octane nodes, it sure would be fantastic. Um, V-Ray, you know, those devs put a lot of effort into making sure V-Ray worked with the Shader Tree. There were Shader Tree items for all the V-Ray nodes. You know, I don't know if that's possible. I've definitely asked uh, if that's possible for Octane, but it seems like a great combination. Maybe maybe we can gather some momentum there. I know Octane for Moto probably does pretty well because Moto's render hasn't been updated for a while and it's integrated really well by Paul, um, the developer. So, you know, maybe we could do that someday. But until then, here's a few different ways of, of creating decals, either your own geometry or um, using a second UV map or adding a moto texture locator that you can actually see in the viewport and using that to control uh, the position of your decal rather than fiddling around with the node values on the um, octane nodes. Anyway, all right, that's it. Good luck. Happy decaling. Yum, yum.